Welcome back to another Dragon Ball Super discussion video. For this one, I want to pose the question, is Dragon Ball Super ending prematurely? And uh, feel free at any point to go ahead and post your comments down below. Before we proceed, I wanted to kind of reiterate that, yes, Dragon Ball Super will be ending. Dragon Ball could have another anime return uh, some point in next year or something like that. The only thing that we have as far as media goes is a movie. And yes, this is confirmed. It is not a hiatus. I know a lot of people are still confused about that, and I feel the need to point that out. Yes, Dragon Ball Super will be ending in a couple of episodes. So really, we don't have a lot of time left to kind of pay off some of the things that they've tried to set up throughout the course of the series. So my guests and I are going to go ahead and give our opinions. I hope that you guys enjoy this. Anyways, Mark, how are you doing, man? What's up? What's up? Always good to be back on your channel. Thanks for having me, man. No problem, bro. I'm, I'm happy to have you here, man. So Anyways, jumping into it, what do you think as far as like Dragon Ball Super and the way that the story has been thus far? Do you think that just basically with like some of the things that they've set up, such as like, there's a lot of different ways that this can go, right? A lot of different things they've tried to set up from the Vegeta Kaba relationship to the Gohan build up and the Tournament of Power after being largely absent for most of the series. Just a lot of different avenues. Frieza's underlying plot for the Tournament of Power. Do you think that? the way that this story has turned, the term of powers turned, coupled with the hard deadline of being a couple more episodes is premature. I feel like, uh, and, and okay, I want to kind of preface this by saying it's not the exact same thing. And I feel like the only reason it's not the exact same feeling that we got from Dragon Ball GT's ending and the whole Dark, Dark Dragon arc or whatever you call it is because there's a time limit because they're methodically clicking down one minute at a time for each independent episode to the point where, okay, we know that the time's running out. We know the series is going to end soon, and it kind of feels natural, but that doesn't stop it from feeling rushed, and that doesn't stop it from feeling like, okay, there is a lot of stuff thing and things here that they could be paying off or they should have been paying off sometime throughout this series that now they're just kind of leaving on the table. Like you said, Vegeta going to planet Sadala, going to see the king of the Saiyans in universe six, maybe some payoff between like what's going to happen in Shappa and Beerus's world. Like, are they ever going to reunite? Are all those universes going to be brought back? We're not really sure yet. And obviously Frieza just keeps coming back and forth and back and forth in this tournament. What is his deal here? I was telling you before we started recording, look, I made this pro I made this proclamation months ago saying, you know what? They kind of ruined Frieza at the very beginning of this series, and now this arc is redeeming him. He's an amazing character. Every single time he's on screen, we just want to see more of him because this is the Frieza we all know, love, and remember from the good old Dragon Ball Z days. Now they're kind of ruining him again. I mean, like, why is he largely not in this arc? What is his main goal if not to be the guy who comes in and wins for Universe 7 and or betrays Goku? It can't be one. It has to be one of those two things. And I feel like with so little time to actually build that up and make his character known that that's what he's going to do, especially with all the hints that he's going to use the wish for devious purposes, we don't have enough time to pay any of that stuff off. Yeah, I have to say it, it feels rushed, but just because this arc is kind of manipulated or told the way it is, because we have that ticking clock, it feels like, okay, there is a natural endpoint here and we're going to go back to Earth and Universe 7 and everything's going to be okay and, you know, close the book on it, the series is done. And that, at least for the most part, feels like a genuine conclusion, if not left like not if not something leaving us as fans scratching our heads and going what is going on here yeah and see i agree with that notion because the the series has set itself up and it always kind of did to where at any point if it wanted to it could just say okay we're done we're gonna now fast forward time because you know they they found a way to shove all this stuff in that time period when a lot of us thought and still think that that wasn't exactly the best idea. I mean, and it also kind of retcons the idea that, oh, I haven't seen you in years, Goku. And also, oh, we've had all these years of peace and all this stuff. So they've had a built-in failsafe at any point. And, you know, this is exactly that. At any point, the tournament of power uh, is just a couple of minutes left in it now at this point. And they can say, okay, we're done. You know, Universe 7 wins or whatever. Go back to Earth. And then everything proceeds on to the end of Dragon Ball Z's ending, basically. Um... It's just for me, like, in terms of Frieza, for example, if that was the case, there shouldn't have been so many bait and switches with Frieza. I don't know if it was just to try to develop Frieza's character, but before I proceed, though, I want to also preface this by saying that 
maybe this wasn't the case anyway to begin with because a lot of this goes back to the Universe 6 tournament with the Vegeta and Kaba stuff because that's another really big thing that they set up that they're obviously not going to pay off in the form of the show. Now, they could come back and do it in the form of a special, uh, the next show if there is that, or in the movies. Not going to talk about that, specifically talking about the material that we have here today, right now, and then the next couple of episodes. Um, so that really harks back to way back then. But in terms of Frieza, just in particular, it's like he comes out. Okay, they build him up. They say, oh, well, he's going to try to betray them. He even proposes to Dispo, for example. Oh, yeah, I'm going to do this. Oh, hey, I'm tired of being controlled. I'm going to be one that surpasses the gods or rules the gods or whatever Frieza winds up saying. You know, all these other things. And now at this point, it just seems like a tease really to me because it's like they are giving Frieza so much plot armor that no matter what happens to him, he is surviving in this arena somehow. And it's like to me at this point, like – they went ahead and blew up the entire arena, okay? Knocked it into a bunch of tiny little pieces. And in this episode, the latest episode, um, Jiren goes up and he just pummels Goku from above, pause, uh, and it winds up destroying all of the surrounding uh, rubble or just places you could find footing. And, you know, they can't fly or anything, so it's like, where the hell is Frieza even at? And then, more <laughs> importantly, what's really killing me with the Frieza thing is, like, even the gods are acting like they don't even know Frieza's there. They're so distracted by this fight. Even Jiren is so distracted by this fight that nobody notices Frieza's missing, <laughs> you know? So they're obviously giving Frieza an insurmountable amount of plot armor, but for what, right? You know, this is this can only end one way. He's Even if he's the last guy in there to uh, be the winner, he's going to get cheated out of his wish, you know? Yeah. <laughs> so there's no way this can, there's no time for that. Yeah, he's going to get cheated out of his wish because Goku, regardless of whether he gets in or out, just because Universe 7 wins because of Frieza, Goku is obviously the MVP. He's done the most Hell yeah. in this entire show, in this entire arc. And and that's the thing, too. Like, Goku doesn't have to win. Universe 7 has to win, and Goku gets the wish, right? And then that's going to make Frieza mad because he once again misunderstands the rules in order to get the actual Dragon Balls. He did it in Namek, and he's done it again here. He didn't put himself out there he didn't fight to his full capability he really sat out the entire time and i've said this before where you have no real indication of who's going to be the mvp and or why but i think it really goes to back to saying that like yeah the zinos are just having fun and whoever had they had the most fun watching is going to get the wish so ipso facto it's goku even if he doesn't win the tournament that's just my thought the one thing uh, i have to point this out when it comes to uh frieza and his plot armor and uh, this just has to be said when 17 saves him, he comes back and he actually fights Jiren. That's a really beast moment. We all really wanted more from that, but he gets kind of thrown aside really quickly. It's a fun moment, but it doesn't really serve the story very much other than to express his plot armor in such a way that is kind of infuriating to me because 17 sacrifices himself in order to allow Goku and Vegeta not to be eliminated. Him, Goku, and Vegeta. But Frieza, at least at this point, just because the plot demands it, is so far and away uh, from Goku, Vegeta, and 17 that 17 doesn't even feel the need to protect him. <laughs> like, uh, like uh, 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 Jiren is just sitting there, and obviously after taking out Frieza, he knows he can take out Frieza, lick the split, but he it shows his arrogance with Frieza, and maybe that's the point, is he's so focused on Goku, he's so focused on the Saiyans and everyone around him that he's not focusing on this guy who's like, I'm, you know, whatever borderline be dead at this point. yeah like <laughs> he's like the rules be damned you're mine and then he goes after him and uh jiren easily takes him out but then like he's like yeah that guy is, has nothing to worry about he's not even on my level and that's why freeze is probably gonna beat him at the end of the day and like i said i like that the fact that they brought frieza back i like how they they've done it but this whole back and forth thing, which Dragon Ball Super does a lot. I mean, they're doing it with Frieza now. They did this in the future Trunks arc where they were going back and forth between time the timelines so many times just to kind of regroup, get the Sensu beans, learn the Mafuba, like go train in the hyperbolic time chamber, room of spirit and time, whatever you want to call it. Mafuba! But that's 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 the case though. It's like, why are we doing this? Why are you allowing the story just to kind of take a break or allow, allow characters in a battle royale just to take a break for episodes on end without ever even updating us where they are, what they're thinking, or how when they're actually going to come here? I understand this show is for kids, 
but it's like they really think or they think that we forgot about Frieza. And that's just one thing that kind of makes me mad is, no, your audience hasn't forgotten about the Fri- Frieza character, the person you put in this tournament because he sells toys. I don't care how old they are. And, you know, the same can be said for Gohan throughout this entire series. Hey, 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 Tr- you're, tre- tre- you're treading water here, Mark. No, 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 no. I'm just saying, I, I'm just saying, one of the things that's made Gohan's character kind of unique in this arc and I have to say, I don't think that they did his character arc any favors by getting him taken out so quickly and with no major accomplishments in the tournament power. Yes, taking out this boat was a cool thing, but as opposed to all the other scenes in the tournament power, Gohan was the only one who didn't actually break any limits. And listen, somebody wants to argue that and tell me that, yes, Gohan actually broke some kind of limits and was better off having fought in this tournament than he was at any other point in the series, because at least as far as I'm aware, they built him up from the Fukatsunu arc of Dragon Ball Super, where he ends it as like, well, I wasn't really helpful there, so maybe I should start training, kind of sitting out the entire Future Trunks arc, and then coming back with the preliminary matches and the whole build-up recruitment arc for Dragon Ball Super and the Tournament of Power. Bro, he he even sat out the entire tournament arc. That's why I had really big hopes for Gohan, because he was gone for two whole arcs. Mm-hmm. Like he literally did nothing for majority of this series. So, so they bring him back. They give him a lot of spotlight. Goku makes him the 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 team captain. And so we're all thinking, okay, maybe he has a win. Maybe he has anything like whatever. And I can understand. No, that's just not Gohan's character. Gohan's a scholar. He's never going to be on the level that Goku and Vegeta are because he just doesn't want it. Yada yada yada. I can totally live with that. I'm totally fine with that. But the problem is, is why did you give him that build up at all? Why was he important in this arc at all if this was the only time you were ever going to give him that shine and then you refused to do so? Yeah, I agree. And like I said, as it pertains to Gohan, it really hurts the most because of the fact that he just was gone for so long. And, you know, when it comes back to this, there's a whole return to dominance arc that they had to fulfill with Gohan. You know, uh, oh, I've got my ultimate form back. And, oh, he, what did he say to Goku? He's like, I want to achieve a level of power that nobody's ever seen before. Something wonky like that. Yeah, transformation. Like yeah, that. yeah. He what said something form? like that. Yeah. And it's like, well, bro, you, not only did he not get that. He was the tournament champ, like not champion, um, captain. And the second that they jump in the ring. More than half of them don't even listen to him anymore. Uh, they don't follow the plan. And it's just like, well, Gohan literally doesn't do a whole lot. Not to say that I didn't like Gohan's portrayal for the most part, but it kind of felt like, you know, he was hanging in there to be one of these final guys. And I'm not mad with 17 in particular uh, because I did like 17. I feel like they did 17 well, personally. Like I like the way that they used his character towards the end of his uh, character arc, you know, because now he's dead, basically. But, you know, he was there because he could project barriers he had the limitless energy uh and all those other things and i'm fine with that i just feel like gohan could have played a bigger role maybe gohan and vegeta team up to be topo or something like that i'm not trying to say say that from like a biased perspective but it's just like i think vegeta is one of the only good characters in this series and that's saying a lot because gohan has been a very bad character i will say this when it comes to gohan's character and the fact that it's ending prematurely just to kind of get back to the whole point of this video the whole buildup with Gohan, making him the team leader, giving him his fighting sense back, always saying throughout this entire series that this guy has more potential than Goku and Vegeta and everything. As long as he tries, he can be well and above everyone else on the playing field. And the whole concept of, I'm going to get a new form that no one's ever seen, I'm going to achieve it myself, yada, yada, yada. This to me, and the very fact that it's ending is something that I kind of regret. I feel like they're missing out on an amazing story potential because there was this grandiose theory from everyone it, it was all over the place grand priest zeno someone else from one of the universes oh, yes. Z- zarama someone coming in and interrupting the tournament it felt like this for a moment in this whole thing has been going on for over a year i thought just part of me thought and it could have been cool uh you have the whole preliminaries and recruitment arc and everything as the first heart the first part you know this is your beginning arc your first beginning arc The whole Tournament of Power, all of it, 30 plus episodes, is your middle arc. And you're building up to the grand fight between Goku and Jiren. And you're all thinking that that's going to be the thing. And then someone either interrupts it or it ends. And then whatever that wish is or whatever happens, 
That leads us into the third final arc of the series and everyone who was important and all the cool techniques and everything that we saw from the turn of power was actually useful in that arc. Like we had to establish all these people because we have to establish how their powers are going to be useful in that arc. So you have kind of this whole war arc that you've seen or everyone's been wanting this entire series against all the multiverses or something, fighting the Grand Priest, someone uh, taking out the Zenos. I don't know. But near the end of it, because you're building up Gohan this entire time through this entire huge three-part arc like the original Dragon Ball Z days, it's Gohan, not Goku, who actually masters uh, Ultra Instinct first somehow. I don't know. You, you know, I pull away. But <laughs> he, he, he masters it, and then we get that Gohan white that everyone's been talking about for so long. You know, something like that. I think would have been awesome and really well paid off a lot of the stuff that we saw in the turn of power, like having Frieza back for a particular reason. Maybe he does get his wish and he is the final villain of Dragon Ball Super. So it all kind of plays in and without Goku making this request, you wouldn't have had them get Frieza. Gohan wouldn't have had the power. All of this stuff, you know, it's all Goku's fault. I think that that would have been kind of cool. But no, they didn't do that. And now we're just ending and it feels a little premature, like you said. No, I 100% agree with you. I mean, I feel like, yeah, that was a big thing that the fandom had conjured up. Like, you know, we could see a lot of, and I think part of it too is it was it would have been cool, but also maybe we were just kind of overthinking a little bit. I mean, from the Daishinkan's expressions and stuff, it would have been awesome to see a whole evil angel arc, but that's one of the things that they could have done but didn't do. But kind of harking on a similar idea to an extent uh, that could have led us into another season or things like that of Dragon Ball Super, or just another, uh, you know, portion another arc if you will what do you think about the whole vegeta kaba relationship because that's going to come back around right i i don't expect the series to leave them dead um because of the way that it's been so far i really really expect for vegeta to fulfill that wish despite the fact that he's gone now uh via either goku making the wish you know some sort of change of heart for zeno or something or maybe vegeta somehow is the mvp i don't know but either way what do you think about that because that's one thing for sure we're not going to get a chance to pay off. Maybe they say, oh, Vegeta, uh, prior to the end of the time skip, Vegeta goes to planet Sadala, and they just kind of let us know, but we don't actually get to embark on that journey with him. What do you think about that? I, I agree. I feel like this is something, they've brought it up too many times already. I think they've already brought it like three times, four times. That's my point. Like, uh, And he was like, you know, Vegeta said it, the Universe 6 tournament, and here we are like, so long later like what how long has it been since that tournament it's in like dragon it's been ball literally time. 100 episodes no, no, or in dragon ball time dragon like ball years time. yeah that's years. what i'm saying it, it, we're, we're that far later and here he is still trying to do that so that's definitely something that he's really really interested in so the one thing i would do if i was them just creatively is we know the movie that we're getting at the end of the year is going to be set trying to explain the history the power of the saiyans and everything else like that I would, like you said, figure out a way through Goku or Vegeta's the MVP. Someone, Zeno, change, change heart, wishes all the universes back. Hey, we want to do this again. You know, maybe we were too abrupt. This was only 48 minutes of fun. Obviously, these two guys get bored pretty quickly. They, they're bored with blowing up planets in chess mats or something. So they decide, look, this was too much fun. We want to do this every couple of years. So we're going to bring back all these universes. And they're just omnipotent. They have those powers. So then you have Vegeta. It's like he grants, he's like, hey, you know, Kaba, blah, blah, blah. You know, you still promise, you still owe me that promise. Okay. And then we go back, we get to the end of Dragon Ball Z, however they want to end it, they end it. And then I feel like you get to the movie and the big twist of the movie is we're watching it. We're going through the history. It has nothing to do, do with Goku and Vegeta or anything else like that. But the very last twist is this isn't happening in universe seven. It's happening in universe six. We have the God, we have the, uh, we have the, uh, uh, first Super Saiyan God from Universe 6. Yamoshi is not Universe 7. That's why Vegeta doesn't know about it. That's why it's from the Mechian Book of Legends when there's some indication that the Mechians have been around for so freaking long that they might have some connection or at least the original Mechians had some connection and knew about their Universe 6 counterparts because of the whole Dragon Ball thing mm -hmm. and the fact that probably both of those races can use Dragon Balls considering what Champa said earlier on in the series. So that's the big twist is these Saiyans have this power and they're, they know about it and they've been covering it up. And then you're left wondering like, why are they covering it up? And then at the end,
like, hey, you know what, Dragon Ball Super will return or something. And that is our first arc, is Goku and Vegeta going to Planet Sadala with the knowledge of what happened in the movie is canon. And for whatever reason, now that Kaba, Kale, Khalifa, and all of them have Super Saiyan power, they've awoken it, and maybe they show everyone, maybe there's some vast conspiracy there where the Saiyans and their power is going to be the main thrust of the story in that arc with that new series or something like that. That's what I would do creatively. I'm not really sure what they're going to do or how they're going to phrase it. But like you said, they brought up that whole thing way too much for them never to give us any payoff. I'm sure the vast majority of the fan base would want to see something Saiyan related. We want to go to Planet Sala. We want to go to Planet Vegeta. This is something that we've always really wanted to see is how does the Saiyan culture thrive and how do they live? And I think it, they've just dropped the ball. I mean, they, they missed a huge opportunity if they don't. Yeah, definitely. I 100% agree. So just kind of recapping, I do think, and you think as well, that the series has been rushed and is ending prematurely, despite the fact that maybe this was kind of a spur of the moment, last second decision that they wound up making or having to make due to other reasons that we're not privy to, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it just kind of seems like, because otherwise, honestly, if that's not the case, then it's just incredibly horrible writing, to put it bluntly, to kind of tease so many things with out having the intention of paying them off. So who knows? But I will say this, though. If, for example, they want to come back with, uh, you know, if they want to use this material that they set up in this as part of the movie, that's awesome, in my opinion, which we don't know that yet. That's why I didn't really want to talk about that in particular. Or if they use that for the next series, or if they use it for a series of movies, if that's what they decide to do going forward, just series of movies every year instead of having uh, actual anime, you know, that's actually really good setup, like foreshadowing um, or foresight, if you will. But otherwise, and I don't really know if it's it was a good idea, and it <laughs> obviously wasn't going to get paid <laughs> off. So <laughs> anyways, guys, we hope that you guys enjoyed this. If you did, make sure you do leave a like. Let's hit a like goal of 500 likes on this video. And by the way, make sure you check out my man Mark down below in the description. Go ahead and check out his channel and uh, click on his channel, hit that subscribe button. And then watch all his videos. <laughs> watch every single one. <laughs> I will say he put up a really funny Hercule parody that I'll leave down below in the description for you guys as well to check that out. Either way, thank you for uh, joining me here today, Mark. It's totally a pleasure to have you, bro. Oh, yeah. Always a pleasure to be on the channel, man. Thanks for having me. No problem, man. So anyways, have an awesome day. We'll catch you all in the next one. Take it easy, guys.